Happy tenant is a good tenant. We did not intend to be in the property management business. The property management industry is very sharing. We're providing housing for human lives. And life happens to everybody. You don't manage as many properties as I do without the stories. Like six grown men jump back like, what the hell was that? Something's about to eat us. You're listening to the Property Manager Podcast, brought to you by Buildium. Real stories, real people. I'm Tony Milo from Buildium, and this is the Property Manager Podcast. Welcome to Season 2 of the Property Manager Podcast. My name is Tony Milo, and I am joined by Rachel Graham and Fred Tracy. As always. Yes, that's right. So with this episode, we actually talked to a gentleman named Bert Miller, uh, and he has actually uh, an impressive company in Dayton, Tennessee. Uh, and one of the things that stuck out to me about this interview was how he is changing and how he's, how he is changing with his market, which is turning from a small town, I guess, to a bigger small town. So we met Bert pretty recently, actually. Um, someone else, a friend in the organization, uh, sort of wandered by my desk saying, like, I just had a conversation with somebody and it fixed my whole day. Uh, you know, hearing about Bert and all of the ways that he has um, really worked hard with his residents to make um, a successful and mutually beneficial uh, living experience. Um, it just reminds me, you know, every time we talk to property managers and we hear their stories, I'm just reminded of how vital, how important these relationships are between uh, property manager and resident. Yeah, 100%. And he just seems like the kind of guy that I'd love to have a beer with and just have like a nice, relaxed conversation. So um, what did you think, Fred? Yeah, aside from uh, the heartfelt story, I thought him taking on everything as a business owner and trying to delegate out his services of the day-to-day, I thought that was an interesting point that a lot of property managers deal with at one point. So Right, he's going through a transition right now. With his market, he's looking to transition. And so given that, let's let's get right to his story. Let's. How about we roll it? Happy tenant is a good tenant. You know, Dayton, of course, is a is a changing market. Um, you know, a small town moving into more of a, a larger town, or maybe even a, a city eventually. About ten thousand uh, people uh, live there currently, um, and so what we want to talk about today is sort of staying true to yourself in a market that is rapidly changing, in a market that has you know new investment coming in that is sort of changing the face of the city, and sort of dealing with that transition. So, going to get into that. So, um. I know that you've been looking to transition yourself to a different role in your company. Um, could you explain, you know, what your goals are and, and how you're really looking to uh, to make that change ideally? Well, fewer dirty jobs would be nice. Fewer jobs, period. Of course, is the is the dream. I'm having to fight myself to delegate things though, because I'm a do-it-yourselfer both by training and inclination. But I'm getting older, you know, it's time to let somebody else get in there and do the dirty work, even if it won't be done quite as perfectly as I'd like to think I'm doing it. I'd like to see myself doing more sitting at the laptop, check it in with Pildium and less fixing it myself or collecting it myself. And the real dream, of course, is a Friday off. Right, right. So hopefully you can get there with some uh, some property management software and some automation to help you along the way. But but you mentioned, um, you know, a challenge that, I, that I've heard from a lot of property managers uh, which is being able to delegate and to move to that next phase of the business, which you know really relies on you know entrusting people and systems that can automate your processes. What have you What have you learned so far? Like, do you have any funny stories about like having to you know sort of let go uh, a little bit and you know delegate something to someone when? You know, you weren't sure if it was going to actually get done. Not a whole lot, because like I said, I, have, I haven't really delegated a whole lot in my past. Uh, I've tried a couple of times with different different guys, and it's not worked out very well. And so I, I kind of went back to doing it myself. But I've got a guy, I'm, I'm actually talking to a guy right now about coming in to do my regular maintenance for me. And for anybody who knows me, that's a, that's a huge step. I think the biggest part is just relaxing and realizing that not everything's going to be perfect and, and you have to just sort of work with it as you go and, and find somebody who's going to work with you and be kind to your tenants as they go in and work on things. I think that's really the maybe even more important than somebody who's like an excellent mechanic and can do the job very well as somebody who also knows how to give a little customer service and be kind to your tenants while they're interacting. Right. So they basically can can. Give uh, give people the experience that you give them that that TLC that that 
the special touch that really makes separate your business from other people in the market. W- what kind of uh, yeah? What are what are your sort of your biggest pangs or your your biggest difficulties when it comes to maintenance? Obviously, I you know I can imagine you get like the the leaky sink, the you know flooded toilet. Uh, oh, it's you it's, name it, right? It, it just all rolls off of me at this point. I've been doing it for so long. There's just a uh, plumbing's like my strong point. I've always been good at doing my own plumbing. I'm kind of okay with electrical work. I can do most of it without absorbing too many volts at one time. Um, <laughs> but uh, uh, is there a story there? You no know, hospital visits, I hope. No, no. But oh God, when I was teaching, I've taught myself a lot of stuff. When uh, when I was growing up, we were in Dunlap and owned a bunch of stuff in Dunlap. And I, my dad, uh, he knew how to do most stuff, but he was busy doing other stuff. So I would between going to the local hardware store and talking to guys there and other uh, contractors in town, I b- basically taught myself a lot of the uh, electrical trade, but it also involved absorbing a lot of volts. And uh, <laughs> 110s don't bother me much anymore, but a 220, that'll that'll make me stand up and take notice. A 220 will definitely blow your, blow your hair back, I would imagine. <laughs> It'll make me stand up and say some words, that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I guess that's a good thing to do on a Friday, right? When you need a little bit more energy. Um, <laughs> nope, I don't do maintenance on Friday. Friday's just collections. Friday's that's, just oh, that's right. And, and yeah. I heard a little bird told me actually heard a little story that you have been collecting rent in person for all your units for years. So tell me about that. Well, my my actually that's more wisdom from my father. He said, "Get them trained so they're used to seeing you every Friday because a lot of our rentals are weekly." So when I took over from him, that was I, you know, just being there every Friday is a lot of it because they they know you're coming in that Friday to get the rent. So I, the last time I missed a Friday was the day my son was being born. Wow. Uh, he was uh, rude what enough was to, be, to be born on a Friday, so <laughs> I had to miss rent. But, the nerve. Uh, I know, but that's the last time I missed a Friday, and he turned 16 four Fridays ago. That's quite. The track record. So only once you missed a Friday. Well, that no. Well, before then, my dad was still alive, and he would cover Fridays every so often. But for the last sixteen years, he's been passed away, and I've been been doing it. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Um, but it's it's so nice that you've continued the tradition. You know, family businesses. I've I've been involved with them before, and I, I know how it is. So that's, hopefully, uh, I can ease the Friday burden for my son a little bit with this building process. It won't be quite so onerous for him. Yeah. Yeah. We, we hope so too. And you know, that's, that's the idea of, you know, using software like Buildium. Yeah. I bet that you developed a lot of great relationships by being there and, you know, shaking hands. That is the one part that I'm going to, I'm, I'm still going to have to be there most Fridays just because that that's my day for people to come look at my face and either talk to me or yell at me, depending on what they need that day. And, I reassure them it's going to be taken care of, or if somebody wanted to rent, they could always knew they could catch me on Friday and put in an application and talk about what was coming open, and that was sort of my 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 interaction day. Hey, you probably get phone calls all the time, regardless, right? And that's just one of oh, the, yeah. the, the absolutely one of the things of being a property manager. You're to a certain extent, you're always on call, right? Very much. Somebody's got to be on call twenty four seven for those maintenance emergencies, but you've got to be available to people who are out there looking for an apartment or. You know, any sort of problem that comes up, you have, they have to be able to contact you so you can deal with whatever it is. And that's being a property manager is being on call. But hopefully with Buildium, I can give them access to me 24 hours a day without having to give them access to me 24 hours a day. And that, that that's something I'm looking forward to. Yeah, and we've heard that a lot from, from different property managers, um, especially recently. It's been coming up a lot and, you know, around the idea of, yes, people expect like very quick service. Like if there's a problem with, you know, their kitchen sink or what have you, um, like they want a response relatively quickly. And so building up those processes to be automated, I think has really taken a lot of the stress off of um, the property managers that we work with. In addition to that whole idea of being 24 seven, people don't want to work 24 <laughs> seven. And nobody and does. Nobody does. It's not fun. Um, you need time with your family. You need time to focus on, you know, other things in your life. And um, but that's been the discipline for the last 16 years is to cut everything out and focus on your business to grow it. That's been the discipline. Be there 24/7. Even if you're not there, you you, you take a call wherever you are and then have somebody on hand to handle it. 
and and there's been no other way to do it until now with the benefit of the internet and software like Buildium. Yeah, and for that reason, we've heard a lot of property managers talk about the importance of having um, you know apps and uh, really mobile mobile ready property management software that allows them to work wherever they might be because of course the job takes you can take you anywhere in a given day just to handle different different fire drills or just different projects right so very much so yeah that is yeah. true so any any examples of how you think you might you know use like the mobile enabled side of you know uh buildium or or, or you know other technology to help you really be more mobile um, and take care of things on the go? Uh, the best thing about building them so far is when that guy walks up to me, I'm out working somewhere and he walks up to me in the parking lot when I come out of where I'm working. He's like, well, how much do I owe you right now anyway? And I've been like, well, let me get my book out and figure it out. But now I can just bring up the app and bring up his name and be like, well, you owe me blah, 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 blah. And it's just right there at my fingertips. Or I can tell them, well, you know, go log in and, and look at your account. It's right there. Well, that's that, that's great. That's good to know. So, all right. So we've talked a little bit about Dayton, but I want to get into it a bit more because it um, sounds like a, a really interesting market. Um, oh, what Dayton. is? Day, <laughs> tell me, tell me what Dayton is like these days. Things are changing, but a lot of things are, are also still stay, staying the same, and it's. It makes for an interesting market. Yeah, I bet. So are you seeing a lot of single family growth or like multifamily growth, um, like zoning changes, anything like that? Uh, there are some zoning changes, at, um, uh, not really affecting the uh, apartment market very much. Uh, mostly that's for uh, industrial factories. We've got some factories coming in. The zoning uh, really hasn't affected me so much. Uh, they've been trying to build another hotel and the zoning, zoning commission has given them some trouble with that but i think that has to do with our local sewer capacity i think they need to upgrade the sewer system here in town before they can put in much more in that on that side of town but gotcha gotcha so so it's a small town there's there's you know some growth happening are you seeing any backlash uh to to that growth and i imagine like it's it, that dayton is a city where some people who maybe work in knoxville like also live in and do some commuting there is that is that accurate Mostly Chattanooga. We're about a half hour from oh, Chattanooga, okay. so we get a we're like a bedroom community of Chattanooga. Knoxville's a little far away for that. But as far as the rapid growth goes, there are a lot of new apartments going up. Most of them are high end. A lot of the landlords building, they're wanting to put the marble countertops in, and uh, they want those new engineers coming in from TBA who are starting up the new reactor and uh, you know the new. Uh, managerial set from the new factory they're trying to get those uh, but they're all like you know high-end high-cost apartments and they're te they're tearing down a lot of little rinky-dink rental houses in places that used to be around here to make these and we're seeing a rise in the number of displaced people who were renting those little rinky-dink places for little or nothing and they don't have a place to go now there's not another landlord who's got a place that cheap to live so you see them camping out in a field or couch hopping or just becoming street people oh wow that's that's uh that's terrible to hear but yeah it is a problem seeing the same thing in boston you know just in different parts of the city in different neighborhoods that have quickly become gentrified um and where do people then go well it, it really just depends on the person and their resources but most of them don't have many resources or family and that's why they're in this position already i'll work with seth of the southeast tennessee human resource agency which is a federal agency and uh, temp services and the Sethra has a program where they'll pay like the security deposit and first month's rent for somebody who's homeless. And uh, you try to get them in. And then I know some people in temp services around and try to get them a job and try to give them a chance, you know, at, at having a roof over their head and an income. Um, and so a lot of this, what's what's fueling this change is obviously a lot of luxury buildings coming into the mix. Where is this money coming from? There's a lot of remote, I, w I would imagine a lot of r remote investment is also starting to happen in Dayton. Well, Dayton has really come up in uh, uh, tourism. Our Economic and Tourism Council has been really working uh, with sport fishing. And Dayton, Tennessee is now the bass fishing mecca of the southeast region. We have bass fishing tournaments here most weekends. And there's, the, there's a couple of new hotels going up just to handle that influx of people but uh, i get a lot of people who have gotten jobs doing housekeeping at the hotels or or you know working at the local restaurant that opened to handle these people that's there i don't think there's a there's everybody wants to get the big fish the big money people and nobody's building rentals for the guy who's cooking for the big money person or doing the housekeeping for the you know the the necessary people who 
who who are there, you're not making any housing arrangements for those people in, at their financial level. And I think they're just sort of being overlooked. Yeah, well, you know, you've got them in mind, so that's good. And I think that it's, you know, maybe more people, as, as the need grows, hopefully more people step up to the plate because it's all – it's up to us, really, in our own communities to an extent to, to see the problem and try to solve it, right? Sometimes I can help a person and sometimes I can't, but you just got to keep trying. Yeah, for sure. So you're making a transition yourself, and we talked a little bit about this, you know, to maybe a more managerial side of things. Like, how does that feel so far? How has it been, like, impacting your day-to-day? How does it feel? I feel weird. <laughs> we all we all feel weird sometimes but but tell me more about that it feels guilty a lot uh sometimes it feels like i'm shirking or being lazy because i'm not hopping in there to do that manual labor job i'm finding it difficult not to try to do it all mm-hmm. uh but like i said i am talking to a guy about doing maintenance regular for me and while i'm having some difficulty letting go of being mr everything I'm I'm excited about getting on the managerial side and, and, and being able to grow my business into new areas. And the most exciting part that, about that is just the freedom offered. I, I'm the manager of what? Well, every day, every day I get to go out and answer that question however way I, I want, you know. So do you have uh, so any advice for other property managers that are looking or thinking about doing the same kind of transition or making the same kind of transition? I think the most important part is just still try to make solid connections with your tenants and your employees and, and take care of them. And as long as you're taking care of your people, no matter what position you're in, if you're trying to take care of your people, people would literally get in line to do business with you because there's not a lot of businesses that, you know, are looking out for you. That's great advice. Uh, and, you know, at the end of the day, what kind of property manager do you want to be known as? I mean, you've obviously built a reputation up already. What do you want people to say about you when you're not in the room? Oh, <laughs> what do they say? Well, no, that's oh. a two, two separate questions. <laughs> well, let's, talk, let's talk about that first because they do say some things about me. I've been doing, I've been holding down my spot here for like 30 years since I've been, you know, in it, around it, and kind of running it. And there's been some things said about me. A lot of it you just have to let roll off your back. And a lot of it you kind of kind of take like a, a compliment with a grain of salt. You know, I'm not perfect. I'm not trying to be perfect. I'm just trying to do the best I can do every day. And sometimes that means that. I, I do something great and everybody thinks it great. It's great. And sometimes I do something and everybody thinks it's awful, but I, I'm like, well, I had to do it. So if you're worried about what people are saying about you, I think my best advice is don't become a property manager. Because <laughs> you're going to get your feelings hurt. Right. These property managers take a lot of punches. They take a lot of, a lot of punches uh, for the team, for their owners, for residents. It's, you know, definitely uh, not for the, the, the faint of, Heart. I've been the bad guy so many times willingly. Like, uh, oh, one time I had this lady rent from me and her son wanted to live with her. And he was like 30 years old. He just didn't want to work. He was going to lay up on his mom. She didn't want him there. And I said, well, it's up to you. And she said, I don't want it to be up to me. I want to go tell him you said he couldn't stay there. And I'm like, okay, go tell him I said that. She went down there and told him and he came up to my office yelling and cussing. And I said, look, I, I said you can't stay there and you can't stay there. You know, you can either leave, right, call the police on You know, I didn't want him yelling at his mother. She's a little old lady. I'm a big dude. So I put myself in the place of being the bad guy because that's kind of what my job is. You know? Well, you don't seem like a bad guy to to, to, <laughs> to me. Um, and I would say overall, like, you've got some pretty amazing stories. It was great to talk with you about Dayton, learn a little bit more about the market and, and how that's changing. And um yeah, I want to thank you for, for taking the time to speak with me today. So I appreciate it, Tony. It's been great talking with you. Wow. I can't believe that he has been receiving rent or collecting rent weekly in person for all of his units for the past, oh, I don't even know. 16 years. 16 years. Every Friday. I mean, that's impressive. And I think that obviously there's a lot of work and it sounds like he doesn't want to keep doing that, which is one of the reasons why he's using technology uh, to make it easier on him. But again, that transition from being the kind of guy that shows up, he's self-managing, and now he's going to start, you know, managing other people's properties. I think just making that transition and still maintaining the human element is something that I know he's going to do. He knew that he had something to contribute to make it a successful uh, environment for the resident and for his business. And, you know, all of us are used to like, hey, it's the first of the month, you know, rent's due. But... uh, 
you know, he he really thought through what their living experience was. And if they were being paid weekly, like, all right, well, so then let's instead of divide by 12, divide by 52. And he he really um, put a lot of himself into uh, into helping that relationship uh, thrive. You know what he is, Rachel? What is he, Fred? I mean, this in the nicest possible way. He is a control freak. He is. He Hashtag is. control freak. I mean, he, he takes some jolts to the to the hair doing electricity himself. I mean, shout out to you, Bert. Yeah, that's uh, right. Fixing everything, doing all the maintenance, uh, you know, and still providing at the end of the day, like affordable housing to to like working class people. And I think that is so important because it's so easy to run after like money and when, you know, your market changes. Um easy to like just go after all of the luxury developments but really a value of his and you can tell that he's going to keep that is really providing that um providing that value in housing for for people that you know work hard so kudos and for our listeners who haven't experienced the control freak uh inside joke that fred and i were talking about a minute ago uh one of the things that we're known for um when building sort of out in the world and we're at conferences and trade shows is we have these t-shirts that we give out that say control freak on the front the highest compliment we can give somebody is that badge of control freak Mm -hmm. if you ever buy a booth come get it it's a really comfy shirt yeah it's a comfy shirt so are you a control freak and if you're not a control freak what are you what's your property management style uh, we'd love to know, so definitely make some comments like around this podcast podcast episode because it also gives us ideas, and we'd love to hear how you look at the business and and your role in it. Um, so with that said, I think that pretty much wraps it up for us here today. As always, uh, feel free to give us a five star rating. Uh, please let us know of any ideas or comments or feedback you have because we always love to hear from you. And with that, we'll talk to you next time. <laughs>